for. Go to our website and see what our season is. I will take a moment just to call to your attention the fact that on next year's season is a world premiere of a play that was brought forth in last year's festival. Uh, Nate Epler's Good Monsters is on the season for next year. <laughs> Let me say a few words of thanks very quickly here. I need to say thank you to National Arts Magazine, a new sponsor for this festival. So thanks to them for joining us. I want to say thank you to the Metro National Arts Commission and the Tennessee Arts Commission. Those organizations do great work making sure that we have a lively cultural life here in our town. Um, I'm happy to announce that we've uh, uh, procured another source of funding that will support next year's Ingram New Works project. So in next year's speech, I'll be thanking the National Endowment of the Arts for helping with this project. Thank you to the Nashville Rep staff. Those folks work so hard, and this year has been a tough one. <laughs> and when it's festival time, we're tired already, and yet they work their tails off. So please indulge me by clapping really hard for the great. <laughs> Finally, uh, a big thank you to the person without whom we would not be here at all, a woman who believes in the importance of new work for the theater, and she puts her money where her heart is, so a big thank you to Martha Ingram. <laughs> Not only is it healthy and good for you, <laughs> but uh, the proceeds support the professional internship program. So they'll appreciate it if you get some M&Ms during the break. Um, uh, uh, this is where I'm going to ask you to just check your cell phones, please, and make sure that they are silenced, if you will, so that we don't disturb the reading once it gets started. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the project. I see people not only that I know from the whole season, but you've been here. This is the ninth day of a 10-day festival, so forgive me. But I'm going to say it again. This project has three parts. The first part is a fellowship, the Newark's Fellowship, which we offer to a playwright of national reputation whose work we admire and someone we think we'd love to work with. And we were delighted this year when the fellowship was accepted by Donald Margulies. So he has been working with us throughout the season and mentoring the playwrights in our lab. And so a big thank you to Donald to becoming a member of our family this year. We've really had a great time with him. Uh, and then, of course, the second part of the three parts is the New Works Lab itself, which uh, is the place where four other plays go to get born. And I'm actually going to let Nate Epler tell you about that in just a second. And then the third part is this festival. And that's where you come in. And so once again, I just have to say thank you for your being here. Your presence uh, really does make a difference and impacts the work that the playwrights are able to do with their plays. So thank you for that. But to tell you a little bit more about the lab itself, uh, I'm happy to introduce to you our playwright in residence and the director of the New Works Lab, Mr. Nate Epler. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Nate Epler, playwright in residence and director of the New Works Lab, and I am, I am so proud to be here. I, I can't thank you enough for uh, being here. Without you, these uh, plays would be um, just words holding hands. Uh, um, e each year, uh, the uh, National Repertory Theater supports the development of five brand new plays for the stage. Um, the first play was played by our fellow and my new BFF, Donald Margulies, who was here <laughs> yesterday and the day before. We're BFFs, you can ask you. Uh, and uh, the other four plays are by our lab playwrights. Uh, one by me, one by Gabby Sinclair, who couldn't be with us tonight because she is at home watching on the internet or actually having a baby right now. Uh, <laughs> Bianca Sams, who's seated right over there. Corey Keenan Zelt, who's right over there, whose play you're going to see tonight. Um, these playwrights have been with us since October of last year. A brand new play doesn't eject fully formed from the playwright's head as much as I wish that it did. It takes a lot of time, energy, effort, and people to build a muscular new play. Um, uh, the National Repertory uh, Lab is designed to give a playwright what they need when they need it. So they come to us not with a play that's already in development, but a play that's just an idea or a pile of pages. They bring that to us and we start work on the play in October and meet once a month to uh, bring the play to you today as part of the festival. The idea is, is that we're giving those playwrights a home where they can work on their play and then see it. And to help it make the next jump to its next phase of development, we ask you to respond to the play here tonight. So after the show, we're gonna ask you to stick around and have a little talk back about it with the playwright and uh, me, the director of this particular one. Uh, and uh, your, your response is a valuable part of this process. You can participate online by tweeting to us directly at, at NashRep or with the hashtag, hashtag newplay. 
Uh, and I think that's all I'll say about it. So um, without any further ado from me, ladies and gentlemen, Airspace by Tori Keenan Zelta. <laughs> Airspace, a play by Tori Keenan Zelt. Place, a small rust felt city. Time, now. A small house divided into living room, kitchen, dining room, etc. Once it came perfectly out of a box that came in the mail from Sears. Since then, it has been lived in and faded and rusted and sagged and sunk in on itself and has died. Scene one. I'm telling you, it basically hugs you. Lori and Kyle enter. Kyle's eyes are closed. We'll paint. <laughs> and if we take out the boxes, we can stage it so it looks like people live here. Not people, you know what I mean, catalog people. You can rent the shit. Okay, so the kitchen is gonna be all over here. It's gonna be incredible. Wait till you so, see so it. So wait, so wait, what, what are they asking? Just 500. Well, you know I can't ask my No, mom. no, no, dollars. And my dad sent me three grand so we can just use the rest for the reno. See, the kitchen Does he know it doesn't look like the picture? I'll send him a before and after. If he wants a return, he has to take a risk. The bones are good. They don't make them like this anymore. I mean, this shit is collector. A Sears house? We do this right. Two weeks, we'll have a line of dinks down the block to take it off our hands, and then we'll be liquid. You have to start somewhere. No, yeah, I guess I just feel like maybe we should keep looking. We will, as soon as we're liquid again. Well, I thought you were just gonna bid. You have to commit to bid. Only if you win. You didn't think I'd win? No, that's not... Do you want to do this? No, I mean, I don't... Because I if just... you're not all in on this... No, I, I am. Okay. I, okay, okay, I'm not wasting my time. No, yeah, of course, I, ju I just thought we did. We talk about it first. It's just two weeks, and as soon as we redo the kitchen... Well, does the kitchen look like the picture? Well, this will all be kitchen. <laughs> but you don't start here. You take people through the rest of the house first. You come in the back door or the garage or whatever so you can help them see themselves here, not, not who they are who they wanted to be before all the shit, until you, oh, what's this? Like it's an afterthought, like you forgot it was there until now. But then you slow down here. You hover just at the threshold or the bottom of the stairs or whatever, like at the top of a roller coaster. Should I let them see it? Are they worthy? <laughs> this is the moment. See, the rest of the house can be perfect. Whatever, it doesn't matter, because if that kitchen looks like shit, like if it's all 90s or whatever, and you can see this, their eyes literally pull back into their faces and they'll say some crap about, oh, I have to ask my wife, or oh, let me sleep on it, and they are gone. <laughs> it's like in the movies when pretty people start coughing and you know they'll be dead in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we do? We get it right. And if you get it right, that kitchen, that's what reminds them of what brought them here in the first place, what makes them sign 30 years of their life away. Their wife hates them, she married someone else, they had the wrong kids, they forgot to have kids. The worse it gets, the more they believe deep down that it can be better. Have better, get better, if they just had a good house. Deep down, they know, if you want a good family, you need a good house. And if you want a good house, you need a good kitchen. And if you got that, you don't need the rest. So then, all we really have to do is make everything into the kitchen. Open concept. <laughs> Clean lines. Stainless. Sub-zero. Not that off-brand shit. People can tell. And maybe... Yeah. Yeah, maybe a skylight right over the sink so when you're washing dishes you can look up and your kids can be screaming in the nook or whatever but all you see is stars and your husband goes to get the dish towel he's helping you dry in his hand like grazes your ass just a little bit maybe it's an accident maybe he wanted to touch you in front of the kids <laughs> You could get abducted by aliens. Like, if they see the top of your head through the thing and then they beam you up and try to experiment on you, put you out with them, and take over their ship and then bend them to your will. <laughs> yeah! It's 
whatever the person wants to see. <laughs> Bottom line, you want to sell a house? You give it a motherfucking kitchen, bitch. Oh, maybe we can find one of those deep sinks. With, uh, Farmhouse. Oh, we could drive out to Amish country for a weekend. And granite. You don't have granite, you're fucked. And, and one of those big tubs where you lie all the way down. Uh, we could read in there. We could sleep in there. <laughs> If we give up the apartment, use the rent for a fireplace or backsplash or whatever, we could just camp. Yeah. I guess you can do anything for two weeks. It won't be like your camp. It'll be fun. We can paint all day and then do whatever we want all night. Make s'mores, tell secrets, be naked under the skylight. You're really good at this. I told you. Yeah, but I didn't... I just... You are. So we just, we paint <laughs> and get rid of all the walls and maybe like an island or something. You want to know you can move things around. Kyle gets his phone out. What are you doing? Well, you said you wanted a before shot. We should both be in it. Uh, here, go over and stand by the ship. Oh. They make a perfect picture. They wait. It wilts. Maybe we could get a dog. People only like dogs on TV. There's room. <laughs> no, it brings the value down. It makes people think about vacuuming and allergies. No, I, I could train it. I, I could teach it to roll over and fetch and make people love it. We'll see. I mean, we have all that yard. Just keep smiling. <laughs> Are you sure you said it? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Just keep smiling. <laughs> Scene two. <laughs> The house is now in the process of birthing itself into something else, something new. Not a house exactly, but the idea of one. Light, air, space, granite, edges, steel. Everything is kitchen. There's one internal wall, not wide enough to separate the space into rooms, but wide enough to be in the way. And buckling under the strain of holding up the whole house and boxes in a state of packing or unpacking. The house doesn't know if it's coming or going. Babs stands on a counter digging in cabinets. Mac examines the wall. I can't reach. So get down. You said you helped me look. Where'd you see it last? Over top the fridge. Okay, where'd you use to keep it? Over top the fridge. So look there. There, right there. What'd I tell you? It's a crack. Uh, get down and help me find the rubber cement. Mac helps Babs down. She looks at the crack. Well, you're not going to see that once they paint. I'll tell you what you're not going to see. The roof falling on your head, middle of the night. You said you got everything we were keeping. It was on the list and the cross face. It was not in the cross face. Then it wasn't on the list. I wrote it in red Sharpie. We just Remember have to the headache. tide over till they get a buyer. And then we'll have escrow to fix it right. And then you can look for all the casseroles you want. Babs climbs back up on the counter. It's 450. Well, my mom gave me that casserole. I was saving it. Only thing wasn't broke by the time it came down to me. Save it? He doesn't even have a kitchen. You don't know that. The last time he came home, what did he do? Three days going on and on about how trash bags can save the world. There was more to it. If you would have read his notes. Dragging cards. you to every damn Walmart for the ones with the right kind of, right. Uh, what do you call it? Flex. Right, flex. Bags and bags of flex. Won't take a dollar or toothpaste or a ride to the bus. Just walks out dragging bags and bags right. of trash well, filled well, with other bags of trash. There's a lot you can do with the trash bag. If you saw the coat he made me, he's got a mind. <laughs> no waste. His sentences were so long. I could have used duct tape if he hadn't used it all up. Bab tries to climb on top of the fridge. Wait, what are you, it, it's 451. You're gonna fall. What if you help me? Mac keeps Babs from falling and reluctantly boosts her to reach over the fridge. She pulls down a plate. Uh, happy? Well, that's a plate. 52 now. He never gets back till after five, and the mail didn't even come yet. It's probably just Sunday. Let, 
Last week was Sunday. Well, they're probably just forwarding it to the mail to the new place. But they can't buy a new place. They're not even liquid yet. If they got an offer. They're not done fixing up yet. I have time. Babs. I have eight minutes. Look it. Once they get an escrow, then we'll have a whole month. I'll fix up the cracks and you'll have the whole kitchen to yourself. Never mind the damn casserole. We could have dinner and TV. I never even like that plate. She tosses the plate down. He picks it up, puts it on the island. All right, fine. That's what you want. You just do whatever you want. I'm going in. Well, I can't get down by myself. I guess you should have thought of that. I'll fall and my brains will splash all over the linoleum and they'll come and find me and then you'll have to explain. Not if I mop you up first. You don't even know where the mop is. <laughs> sure, over top the fridge. They'll be shocked, but then they'll get over it and they'll wonder who I was, what I'm like, and then all I'll be is a stain and some plate I didn't like. Mac gets the mop out of the cabinet. Don't worry, I'll always mop you up first. <laughs> Then suddenly, someone's approaching the house, humming something big and romantic. Mm -hmm. like Porter or Gershwin or Rogers and Hart. Mm -hmm. Mac hurries to hide them up. Come on. I can't. Keys jangle at the door. Babs tries to get down on her own. It's too high. Mac tries to lift her off the counter. She's a little too heavy. He's a little too weak, or both. They giggle. Suddenly, teenagers out past curfew. Ow! What? You want? Ow! 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 Shh, shh, come on. You're fine. They fall on the floor, then help each other close themselves into the wall just as Kyle enters with a package. He locks the door behind him, peeks out to be sure he's not being followed. It's fine. Scene three. Kyle carries the package like a hot potato. He goes to the wall, opens an air vent, throws the package in, slams it shut. Though the wall is opaque to it, the characters, we might be able to see inside as the package falls at Mac's feet. He warns Babs not to touch it and inspects it elaborately and officially. Outside the wall, Kyle trips over an out-of-place box and red Sharpie. He puts it back where he thinks it goes, isn't sure, tries somewhere else, then back where it was. Opens it, pulls out a casserole dish, admires it, tries to find a safe place to store it until, see, until he sees the plate on the counter. Freezes. Glory? Hey, Glory! Kyle looks for his phone. Dials. Glory, driving and already on one phone, answers her car phone. I'm driving. I know. And I'm on hold with the insurance lady. Uh, did you do the dishes? You said you were. Yeah, I, I was. I did. I, I was just wondering if maybe you... Okay, well then what is exactly the point of you? What? Not you. I Okay, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the point of paying ass tons and premiums was so that you So how long do you think you... It's not mold. Because it's not. Because you can't just get mold. It has to come... There is no water anywhere. Just like ballpark... It's like... I don't know. What's the smell like? Kyle! Oh, uh, I, I don't smell. know. It's a smell. It smells like a smell. I, I guess it's kind of... Uh, okay, well, I'm looking at your loop. explanation of benefits, and it says you offer emergency support and resale services, and I'm bringing people in here for an open house tomorrow, and I can't take them into a chicken documentary. <laughs> <laughs> is this or is this not the emergency after hours? Look, we need help, okay? Just send someone, a anyone. Your B team. Hello? Hello? Shit. She slams on the brake. <laughs> Shit! An animal cries out as something crunches. Oh. Fuck. What happened? Oh, fuck. Uh, did you let the dog out? Me? Yeah. Kyle goes to the door and pretends to let the dog out. Yeah? Glory gets out of the car and looks for the dog. She can't find it. Did you let it back in? Kyle pretends to let the dog back in. Yeah. How long ago? Uh, look, the, the dog doesn't smell, okay? I specifically got a hypoallergenic... It's fine, it's fine, just never mind. Well, it's a good dog. I just have to find something that smells like a mom or a pie or something. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, so, so then the only other thing is there was this plate on the counter when I got home. And you can do things too. I know, that's not... I just meant I didn't really eat today. 
So make a sandwich. And, and we're out of ham. That's the other thing. <laughs> Not to, I, I just mean we had ham, and now we don't have ham, so. Kyle? Yeah? Can you please not do this till we get through the open house? I'm not. I'm just, there's a plate on the counter that I didn't put there. Nobody is trying to abduct you. <laughs> it happened before. That camp doesn't count. Okay, you weren't there. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'll stop at Whole Foods, okay? I'll get ham and something that smells, and I'll check on the mouse traps when I get home, okay? What if she knows I'm here? What if she just shows up? We kick her out. Being a grown-up means never having to deal with people you don't like. No, you know, I know. It's just, I mean, she's my mom. You're scared to leave the house. You freak out over a sandwich. But is that really her fault? Look, just because you shit out a baby doesn't make you not a cunt. <laughs> I mean, yeah? You're fine. I love you. Okay. If you want me to do something here. I'm there now, so. I want to be able to do things. Okay, um, I guess you could start taking the staging stuff out of the boxes and make sure it works. Just don't break anything. We had to give the rental place a security deposit. And you could get dinner started. Oh, and if the staging people show up, just let them in and do whatever they say, but don't let them ask you questions. <laughs> About what? Anything. Okay. Okay, yeah. So wait, wh what do you want? I just want to get through this. No, for dinner. Oh, uh, whatever you want. Well, I, I just want what you want. I really don't care. Kyle finds an old packet of locks. Uh, what about, like, salmon? You said you wanted to be vegan. Oh, right, uh, because the only other thing we have is marshmallows. He holds up the marshmallows, tries to read the ingredients. Oh, but those were for the s'mores. Oh my god, we never did the s'mores. We will. When? Just make a decision, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so how long do you think- You too. She's gone. <laughs> Kyle peeks into the two high cabinets. He starts opening boxes and pulling out bright plastic things. Too beautiful and too sharp. Brand new cooking equipment. It's real estate porn. Meanwhile, scene four. Mac and Babs are packed into the wall's hidden crawl space. It's long and narrow with no room for passing and it's packed with boxes which someone has tried to arrange into a living room. The box living room is cluttered with unopened, stained USPS packages. The clutter has reached the ceiling. It's all sticky. Don't touch it. What? You don't know the crap people try and put through the mail service. Drugs, ransom, bombs. Back in 98, we had some guy tried to mail his soul to Canada. Said God lived there and he could get himself to heaven a little bit at a time. <laughs> in the back door. Who thinks Canada's heaven? Well, that's not the point of the story. We can't have any more boxes in here. There's no room. We just have to get through the open house. Then once they're in escrow, we'll have all the room we need. There's not enough air in here. <sighs> See, this is what happens when you don't take your nap. How can I take a nap? There's no place to lay down. Mac looks around for room to lie down. He picks up some packages, holds them, puts them down. All right, give me your feet. Yeah, you can't hold my feet for an hour and a half. You can do anything for a while. <laughs> Just give them here. Mac chases Babs, trying to grab at her feet. They knock over a stack of packages. Kyle hears. He finds a hiding place. <laughs> We're this close. If we could just hang on a couple more days, then once we get an escrow... Well, then the one we have, what, a month till the next people come? And what if we don't like him as much? I mean, maybe it's better they don't leave. They have to leave? How else are we going to get our house back? Well, they're not just going to give it away for nothing. We did. We're still here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we save up. I get back to work in a month. But you haven't worked in a year. It's furlough. It's temporary. How long is that? I got seniority. Just as soon as things turn, I'm on top of the list. Anyway, you got a better idea? Yeah, maybe I do. All right, great. What's your brilliant plan? I could get them to live here and let us live with them. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> They've got room, they're good kids, and you like his singing. It's loud is what it is. I heard you humming just this morning. If we were out there, we wouldn't have to hum. You could sing. Like you used to, we could all sing together. We could have sing-alongs. <laughs> <laughs> you got rocks in your head. Oh, the city was going to tear it down if it wasn't.
thousand for them. They saved us, and they're good kids. Smart. You saw her at the auction, got a real good deal. On our house. She didn't know. She knew it was someone's. She knew somebody lost, but did she care? No, as long as she got the good in. Well, they didn't make <laughs> us get foreclosed. But they're glad. That's worse. Well, you don't even know them. I guess you do. Tell the truth, I think they could use a little help. I mean, they're, they're not even sleeping. You went out without me? Just last night for a sandwich. <laughs> what kind? Ham. Well, I like ham. Oh, it doesn't matter. Not to you, maybe. Well, she was pacing all around and looking into her phone and she was chewing on her hair and he's faking like he's asleep. I really think they need us. Well, what if they don't want us? They don't know what they want. Not really. Well, what if they kick us out? What if he comes back? and knocks on the door and we're not even here. Did you think about that? We're already not here. <laughs> Look, you wanna spend the rest of our lives like this? So what are you gonna do? Tap him on the shoulder and say, hi, I'm Babs, I live in your wall. No, no, I, no I'll knock on the door and say I'm a neighbor or I'll, I'll figure it out. All I have to do is get to know them and get them to know me and then I can just sort of ease them in. You know, you give that a shot. I would love to see that. Oh, you're not coming. Why not? Well, you're not dressed, and you're not good at people. I'm a carrier. I'm front line. You screw it up, and I don't want to hate you. <laughs> it's not going to work. Just so you know, I don't want you to get your hopes up. Babs makes herself look like a neighbor. She picks up the leaking package. Oh, what are you doing with that? Uh, well, I can't just show up. I have to bring something, and since you lost the casserole... Well, you're not taking that. Here, here, here. He takes the package back from her, looks around for something to replace it. Babs goes out. He turns around. She is gone. Just don't come crying to me. Scene five. Babs steps carefully into the living room. Kyle is hiding in a box. She sneaks to the front door and goes out on the porch. She takes in the neighborhood. It's different. Bab rings the doorbell. It makes a broken sound. Kyle scooches toward the door. Hello? Hello? Anybody? Oh! <laughs> hi. Uh, hi, I, I, I just wanted to say, Welcome to the neighborhood. Are you the staging lady? Yes. <laughs> I'm the staging lady. Bab, uh, Barbara. Kyle, thank you so much for coming out on the weekend. <laughs> I was going to bring something, but uh, this was on your porch, so at least I'm not empty-handed. <laughs> Kyle, still in the box, shuffles to the air vent and throws the package in. It falls yeah. at Mac's feet. So wait, you live here too? No, 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 I live just down the street. <laughs> oh, uh, the one with the, the caved in roof or the, the one with the plastic bag windows? It, it's a couple of blocks over, so it was real easy for me to come out on the weekend. Great. So uh, yeah, so she said we, we could take out the staging stuff and make sure it works, uh, just don't break anything. And, and then I guess whatever else you think. Great. Kyle realizes he's still in a box. Uh, I was just, uh, ah, there it is. He pulls out a grapefruit spoon. <laughs> I was, uh, I was just getting dinner started. I was, gonna, I was gonna bring something for dinner, but then my husband forgot to put the dish away, so then I couldn't find it, and I was getting late, and, well, you know how it is. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, we keep talking about doing s'mores for the longest time, you know, just, just to do something special in here before we finish the flip. But then it was never a good time, and then it, well, you, you know, it started to feel like more of a thing, and there's just a lot with the open house, and now all I can find is salmon and marshmallows, but, I, but I'm trying to be vegan, and, and there's nothing special, and there's nothing for dinner. We could make a casserole. That's dinner, and it's special, and everyone could sit around the table and get to know each other. I just had my dish. Oh my god, I, wait, I just found the most beautiful dish. You're kidding. In a box. Can, can you believe they just left it? No. I think, <laughs> I think it's mid-century. What are the odds? So we'll just make a casserole. Great. What is that, Italian? <laughs> wait, you never had a casserole? Oh, well, my mom wasn't really a, a mom, so. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. It's fine.
fine. She was other things. <laughs> what happened to her? She moved to New York. Well, my Nana used to make casseroles for funerals and Christmas, and whenever she'd be out of town, you could never tell what was in them, but they had these gorgeous gobs of marshmallow you just wanted to lay down in. <laughs> she always said you could stick people together with marshmallow. <laughs> What's that from? Pittsburgh. <laughs> now, they do make your teeth a little fuzzy, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. Awesome. What can I stir? Ow! Ooh. Oh, what? Gosh, you okay? I can't do anything. Well, you're fine. Here. Babs pulls him into the kitchen. She knows the space. Holds his hand under the sink, wraps it in a towel. Better? It's dinner. People make dinner all the time, right? Stupid people make dinner. You want to be stupid? No. There you go. Thanks. Who can do anything in a mess like this? You need a clean kitchen is all. Nana? No, that's just true. <laughs> you sit tight. Babs diagnoses the kitchen, which is flooded with two bright plastic things. Everything looks like a toy version of itself. She takes over the space and tidies it till it becomes hers again. My mom used to say, we're on our own for dinner, like it was super exciting. And then she'd go into the basement and I'd have a yogurt. <laughs> and then a ho-ho. <laughs> and then a Twinkie. <laughs> Kyle digs the grapefruit spoon into his hand. Well, here, how about you just stir the marshmallows? I forget what else was in it, but that's all people remember anyway. Oh, sweet. Oh, there's a recipe on the back. Okay. So, okay, so first I preheat the oven, and then I stir. You want a light touch with this, like you're tickling a baby chick. We, we watch a lot of Food Network and Travel Channel and HGTV. I feel like it's easier to do things when you're just demonstrating them. He practices demonstrating turning on the oven. Babs opens the casserole dish. It's filled with old baby clothes. So I just stir all my ingredients beautifully. He demonstrates stirring. It becomes beautiful. Babs folds the baby clothes and packs them safely away. Let the time go by. I don't care if I can be here on the street where you live. And do the powering feeling just to know somehow you are near. That empowering feeling. That any second you may suddenly appear. <laughs> they dance the instrumental break together through the beauty of the open concept home, becoming some combination of Fred and Ginger, a Nancy Myers movie, and a commercial for cleaning products. <laughs> Mac enters in a ratty and stained USPS uniform carrying Kyle's package. Let the time go by! <laughs> and knocks out Mac's eye. Scene six. <laughs> Mac folds out a clipboard and the package. Sign here. But y your eye. Oh, good. There you are. You left me. In the car. I didn't leave you. I, I was about to come out and get you. This is my husband, Mac. Hello. Wait, his eye, your eye. Oh, that old thing is just plastic. <laughs> Silicone. I'm so sorry. He's got five more at home. I like that one. It's nobody's fault. Happens all the time. Even the first was an accident. Staple gun. <laughs> See, I thought it was a 45. Nobody wants to hear about all that. What is he, squeamish? You're not squeamish, are you, son? You know how some people think they're funny, but really they're not funny. <laughs> well, uh, don't worry. I'm sure we'll find... Well, it has to be somewhere. Kyle crawls around through the boxes, looking for Mac's eye. You could have changed. I'm not impressing anybody. You got that right. <laughs> well, put on that red sweater I made you and comb your hair. It itches. You said you liked it. You said till death do us part. You want to embarrass yourself? Mac goes back into the wall. 
I'm so sorry. Oh, not at all. I, it was my fault. Oh, wait, I think I see it. He's a good guy. He's just... I'm, I'm, I'm sure. He's just not good at people. But, but that's why we're good together. See, I do the people and he fixes things. He's real handy. He can fix pert near anything you break. Oh, there it is. Mac comes out in a red sweater that's a little too small for him now. His hair has been wet and combed. Kyle comes up with the eye. Sign here. Wait, you're... My assistant. USPS. And my husband. Oh. I'm senior carrier, front line. Uh, just part time, but nights and weekends we do this. What? You know. Staging houses. What is he talking about? Don't be rude. <laughs> I told you he's not good at people. Just here in the business, we call it uh, homemaking. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, you didn't know. Kyle hands Mac his eye. Mac hands Kyle a form and a pen. <laughs> On the line. Oh, that's OK. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so I just don't want to sign anything. You know, just in case. You refusing delivery, son? No, I just. Just give him the package. Oh, if he doesn't want to sign. Oh, you're supposed to be helping. I'm trying, but if he's not going to take responsibility. Well, what if I wasn't home? Well, you are. Look, we all have a lot of work to do, and we have to get dinner on the table. Can you just tell her I'm not here, and you don't know who is here or where I am? Who? Whoever sent it. So you don't live here? No. I mean, yeah, just, just till we sell. It's like camping. It's fun. They're going to make s'mores. <laughs> Mac takes out another form. As of what date will you be vacating the premises? Kyle grabs the package. There, I took it, OK? Well, are you going to open it? What did I tell you? Not good at people. But he's real good at fixing things. Great. Yeah, well, I, I, I think there's a smell or something. What smell? Oh, it's just over there. When their backs are turned, Kyle secretly throws the package into the vent. <clears throat> Where? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really smell it either, but that's just because I'm used to it. <laughs> so, so then she, she went to Whole Foods, uh, but she should be back soon, so I guess uh, anything you can do. I'll tell you what your problem is. Just go set the table. He can't even set a table? He is making a casserole. Kyle picks up the casserole dish and eats marshmallows out of it. Your wall's leaning. You know anything about that, son? No. I'm sure it's fine. It's cracked is what it is. Well, Paige, you won't even see it once we're done, and we haven't even started decorating yet. Mac tests the stability of the wall. Babs pulls things out of boxes to decorate the table. So he fixes things, and then you just decorate? Well, we work together, but you know, we both know what we're good at and what we're not. No, oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, but what if, um, what if one of you is good at everything and the other isn't good at anything? <laughs> Everybody's good at something. I mean, yeah. Kyle <laughs> eats more marshmallows. What are you good at? Oh, well, I used to be a librarian, but then people stopped reading, so then it was <laughs> <laughs> mostly making sure the homeless people don't live in the bathroom. <clears throat> kids still read, though. I used to read books to the kids, which I guess is me reading, not them. But still, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> well, anyone can be decorative. All you have to do is find something good to look at. Like, here. Babs pulls out a box of fake flowers. We could make the table special for dinner. What's your favorite flower? Well, Glory likes daisies. Me too. Babs pulls out daisies and looks for something to put them in. There. You see? She likes roses. I can like daisies, too. Sure you can, but you don't. You never ask me. What, I'm supposed to ask you you like daisies? What about these? You like these, oh, too, that, now? That's not even a flower. You smell that and tell me that's not a flower. It's filler, right, Kyle? Look, when you don't have you enough? Just, you have to mix them in here. I'll show you. you Mac just... tries to stick the baby's breath in with Babs's daisies. Babs, ta Babs takes out the baby's breath. <laughs> this goes on. Flowers fall all over the table. Glory enters with grocery bags. Oh, finally! Scene seven. Hey, sweet. So apparently they don't sell food at Whole Foods, or else cinnamon isn't a food. They do have the organic stick kind, but that doesn't have any preservatives, which I guess is what keeps the smell in the thing, or I don't know. So unless you want to buy the fresh picked by nuns, which is like $18 a branch, so I just went to Michael's here. Oh, oh. She throws a candle at Kyle. So this is... I know, I know, it smells like lighter fluid, but the box says it's supposed to smell like apple pie, and I don't care anymore. 
Oh, and I got you a surprise. It's graham crackers. Yeah, so this, uh, this is, uh, Babs. Right, uh, sorry, and, and this is, um, her, her husband. Mac? Uh, so, so he does the fixing, and, and we're more on the decorative side. Fixing? <laughs> fix, fix what? I thought you were just staging and getting rid of the smell. Oh my god, it's mold, isn't it? Just tell me it's not mold. No, it's fine. And he can fix anything, right? Right. I'm still evaluating. You're putting a whole lot of pressure on that wall, you know. But the structure is good, right? I mean, the, the bones are good. <laughs> you bet your ass the bones are good. <laughs> These are good bones. You don't make them like this anymore, let me tell you. Oh, I know, I, I know. You see this stud? That's solid English, English walnut. Maureen <laughs> pulls out the original blueprints and shows them off to Max. See, Kyle? <laughs> they used to ship it out from California all over the country just for the Sears homes. The whole thing came out of the box, but the craftsmanship, I mean, there's no wood pulp, no glue. The design is that precise. And you know how they made it fit together? They cut every piece to fit, every piece! And they sanded off the edges so there's no wiggle room, but it still doesn't fall apart either. I mean, and it works. It stands up. It's kind of brilliant. I don't know. I'd say, sure, now that you mentioned. So anyone can just pick it out of a catalog and feel like he made it himself. Well, it's not as simple as, uh, I mean, you got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to read a plan so you know where to put the walls. Can't just put them up any place. Oh, I know. We wanted to go full on open concept, but. What? Full concept! Sorry, his hearing isn't great, but I love what you've done. How you don't have to have all those walls. I get sick of walls. Well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. You can't just knock out all the walls because you feel like it. Yeah, we had to leave that one up. I guess it's load-bearing. So, so what? Now nobody has any space to themselves? No, no, it's... It's it, just, it's just so, so you can always be together even when you're not, right? Right. Right! Well, you can't just... Put all the pressure on one wall. I mean, that's why it's lean. We'll paint! Ooh, oh, I, I feel like a, a slate or, or a stone or, or gray gardens or, or wall street. Oh, that sounds lovely. So it's a problem with the house, then? There is nothing wrong with this house. This is a good house, all right? So this where's is a the good smell house. come from? We'll talk about it after dinner. Dinner? Kyle and I made a casserole. I thought you were just here to stage. Oh, anybody can paint a house, but to make it a home, you have to make it lived in. I can't sell lived in. I can only sell dreamed of. And what do you think people dream? I know what they dream. They want to be better, have better. You want a good family, you need a good house. And you want a good house, you need a good... A good family? And what does that look like? Clean socks? Sure, and... And uh, marshmallow casserole? Uh, and dinner at a table with your family? I've been doing this a long time. And let me tell you, <laughs> people can feel if a house has that in it or not. It's like squirrels and earthquakes. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Paint ain't gonna cut it. You have to live in it to fill up the space. We've been here six months. But, but really, it's, it's more like camping. It's fun! I mean, yeah. Well, camping's not living, is it? So what do we do? Don't worry. We've done a lot more with a lot less. Just go and wash up. Kyle, you see what everybody wants to drink. Glory, you can set the table. Kyle, Glory, and Babs fall into a ballet of pre-dinner ritual. Mac tries to make sense of the wall and the blueprints. Hands, Mac. Mac leaves the wall to join them. They fall into the routines of a family and sit down at the table. See? Isn't this nice? And who knows, once you spend a little time living here, you might find you don't want to move at all. <laughs> You want to get out before that wall gives out. <laughs> you said the bones were good. Well, they are good, but that doesn't mean you're not going to make your own problems. Knock it out all those walls. And besides that, this neighborhood, what about it? It's a great place to live. Sure, if you like gangs. They're, they're clearing out now. You know, I do hear something moving at night. I never heard anything. Me either. <laughs> they live down the street. Yeah, I might have heard something now you mention it. Down the street. But with somebody's cat or a deer. When was the last time you saw a deer here? No, yeah, actually the urban population is growing. Y yeah, well, you can't be too careful. Remember when Bonnie got stabbed? Just next door. Stabbed? Mm. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> She's fine now. You don't know. She had to move out. Picked up and went to Ohio. What'd she get for the house? 
<laughs> Wasn't worth the trouble to sell it. Sometimes the best you can do is just cut your losses. But they're smart. Getting in on the ground floor of this neighborhood is on the way up. All we need is some young families to come in and make something out of it. None of my business, but this house is perfect for a couple just starting out, starting a family. Oh, we don't... Well, we, we just thought, you know, if, if we don't kill the dog... <laughs> I wouldn't raise a family here. <laughs> you wouldn't. Well, not now. I mean, used to be. Oh, used to be? You'd get stabbed on the street. You'd get stabbed any place anymore. The mall. No, all you do is you figure out where not to go, and then you just, you don't go there. You get stabbed, you're stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> Connecticut. Now, who the hell wants to live in Connecticut? You don't have to worry. It was years ago, and it's all cleared out now. It's quiet. It's too quiet. It's ready. You can really build something. And I'll tell you, this is a good street. They shot a movie here once. It was just a commercial. Batman! Oh, which one? It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we don't have to do the open house right away. Uh, you don't want to put it off. <laughs> get stuck here. Yeah, don't put words in their mouth. She said she just wants to get out of here tomorrow. They don't know what they want. You want to waste your life. <laughs> I used to want to be Batman when I was a kid. You said there was a casserole? Kyle opens the dish. Kyle covers the dish. What? Nothing. <laughs> he needs a spoon. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's... Would you Glory excuse us into the casserole? Glory and Kyle tried to find a private place in the open concept house. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. No, no, no. About us, we'll just pretend we're not here. <laughs> I'm here. Bab kicks him. His eye falls out. Oh. <laughs> Did his eye just? It's no. fine. It happens all the time. <laughs> Babs pulls Matt under the table to look for the eye. You said you were working on it. And you said you'd be home soon. We agreed. We talked to them. You agreed. I never agreed. But just like you wouldn't raise a kid here. Would you? I did. We did. Did we? Or did I just waste my life? That's not. When what? <laughs> he just didn't turn out. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not done yet. But then there was Whole Foods, and there was no ham. And they were fighting, and the flowers, and I was hungry, and now I'm uncomfortably full. And, and there's never any food in this house. You can go to the store, too. You said you were. Why do you always have to be a thing I have to deal with? You know, they do say the first year is the hardest. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just get a pizza. Yeah, I can get it. I can just make another. Yeah, I got it. I'll call. You don't know what you like. Glory takes out a phone, dials. Oh. Kyle takes out a phone, dials. Everything will be okay. I just need more marshmallows. Marshmallows? For the casserole. I thought you wanted to do s'mores. I thought you didn't. Wait, do you? I got graham crackers. She got graham crackers, and he ate all the marshmallows. Well, he was hungry. What the hell's the matter with him? <laughs> At least he made the dinner. He ate the dinner. So what do you want, then? I, I just think maybe we could talk On about... your pizza. I said I'd do it. No, it's really no trouble. Hello? Y yes, hello? I'd like to place an order for pickup. Delivery. Takeout? Uh, uh, what's What's everybody want? Here? Um, hold on. Oh, cheese would be great. Uh, okay, I'm not hungry. Uh, what about pepperoni? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be vegan. What does that mean? It means he's not. Uh, uh, 84 uh, West something. What about mushrooms? I don't like mushrooms. Since when? Since now. What about him? Uh, wait, what, what street is this? It's, it's, it's West... Oh, really? What? Cheese is... Pineapple. And ham. Hawaiian. <laughs> There's something wrong with the wall. Mac can't get it to match up with the blueprint. Mac is trying to measure, but doesn't have anything big enough. Hello? Okay, 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 okay. Two mediums, uh, half cheese, half mushroom, uh, half pineapple, half pepperoni. Then just whatever you think. <laughs> okay, thanks. What? Do you have the card? She hangs up, takes his phone. What? Yeah, hi, what's the total? Okay, what if we put them all on one? What if we just did pineapple? <laughs> Cheese, uh, just cheese. Okay, do you have any specials or? You need money. 
Yeah, no, it's fine. Thanks. How long? She said 20 minutes. They always say that. They wait for the pizza. <laughs> for kind of a while. <laughs> We could start reading up. Babs and Kyle go to the kitchen to clean up. Glory and Mac examine the wall separately and in parallel. They try not to get in each other's way. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, you were right. Thank you. About what? Glory unrolls the blueprints, compares them to the wall. They built it wrong. End of act one.
scene one. Lori and Mac lean over the blueprint like it's a car engine. Mac scratches at his sweater. That's why it's leaning. They built the wall wrong. It's supposed to be three feet to the left. No one did anything wrong. Can I file a claim on that? I'll tell you what your problem is. You don't know how to read a plant. See, three inches on the plant. Two it... feet. No. Wait. Did you measure it? Oh, just a sec. Mac tries to measure the wall without measuring tape. It's supposed to be right in the middle. I got it, I said. It's supposed to hold everything up. Now, I'll tell you what it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be walls. All right? There's supposed to be walls and a kitchen and a front door that locks and a table to make models of spaceships and other places to put your feet up and listen to the game and smell garlic coming in from the kitchen. God, that's sad. No, it's... <laughs> what do you mean? To be boxed up like that? I grew up in little rooms. There's so much breathing. What do you care? You're not staying. People, I mean, people, the buyer. Let me ask you a question. You ever played Jenga? What does that have to do with it? You get a bunch of blocks, right? And you build the blocks as high as you can, and you see how long you can keep building up and up and up. But you have to use all the blocks. So to go higher, you have to pull from the middle. One time, my son got it all the way up to the ceiling. Oh, he had a mind. I always said, could have been an engineer. Well, that's not the point. The point, the point is, you know how you win at Jenga? How? You don't. No matter how, no matter what you do, see, there's only so much you can pull out of it before everything comes down on you. Is there maybe somebody else I could speak with, like a manager? Or... I'm the manager. <laughs> I thought you were the fix-it guy. Only on the weekends. Weekdays, I'm management. She said you were a mailman. Yeah, well, see, I started out in the mail service, and I was so good, they promoted me up to manager of the whole structural residential inspections and assessments department. It's the kind of country we live in. <laughs> Lori dials her phone anyway. No one picks up. But you're still going to help us, right? It's really not up to me. See, there's a protocol. Because I have a before picture. So if there's a crack, it was definitely there when we got here. You'll have that. It's a structural flaw. Uh, that's life. You can't build something without breaking something else. So what are you going to do? Knock it down? Give up? No. You make the adjustment. You move the wall a couple of feet. Okay, but there has to be something I can claim. All right, all right. Look, we're not supposed to do this, but, you know, off the record, I'm you? Yeah. I get the hell out of here. Cut my losses. Really try and build something. That's not an option. You don't want to waste your life. Look, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but as soon as that wall gives out, this house isn't going to be worth 20 bucks. But you can fix it, right? Just till we sell? You want to sell a falling down house to someone? I don't have a choice. <laughs> You're young. Choice is all you got. I have a short loan. $200 a day, every day we don't sell. It was supposed to just be a couple of weeks, but then with the reno and the smell and everything, it just got bigger. What about your dad? My dad sold his house to pay for my college. Well, him and half the world. He can't retire. I'm supposed to be his retirement, but it only got me through two years, so I took my real estate exam in 2007. <coughs> Anyway, he wanted to come for my graduation. He saved for a ticket, but I told him to wait. Give it to me. I took this one econ class, and most of it was bullshit. But I remember the thing about how if your money's not working for you, it's working against you. I mean, that makes sense. It, you don't want to get left behind, right? Anyway, this will work. This has to work. I'll figure it out. Max starts unraveling his sweater and uses it to measure the wall. <laughs> What are you doing? Maybe we could rebuild it with the boxes in the right place, like it's supposed to be, so there's not so much pressure. Mac gives Glory one end of the yarn. Thank you. I'm not making any promises. Right, sure. Um, just don't say anything to Kyle, okay? Scene two. 
Babs and Kyle have finished clearing the table. They do the dishes and find a rhythm together. I mean, we've been here for six months, and I don't eat any marshmallows the whole time. And it's not like I didn't want to. I just, she can't just not care about them and then decide she cares about them. Well, it's not all bullshit what they say. The first year is the hardest. We've been together for three. Oh, well, then you know. <laughs> How bad does it get? Oh, well, it's not bad. It's just, you know. What? Well, just how everything you do, you just feel like you're setting things up for the rest of your life, you know? So whatever this second is, is what your life is going to be all the time, forever. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's not like you have to make some big decision. You just look down one day and there it is. There you are. That's all. How do you not kill yourself? Find <laughs> ways. <laughs> I used to save cereal boxes when we were saving for toys, but I read it's real good for babies if you give them bright colors and shapes. So I give him the cereal boxes to play with. Captain Vitamin, tricks, the real kind, when I could. And he would laugh, he was smart, even then. I know everyone says their baby's smart, but he used to set up the boxes like dominoes all around the room and then knock them over and he'd laugh and then I'd laugh, and some things are worth other things, you know? I bet you were a good mom. I don't know, I tried. He just didn't turn out. Some things don't. You would be, though. <laughs> Me? Oh, money down. I, I don't know. Babs pulls out some baby clothes. Here, smell these. I found them in the box with a casserole. What is that, coconut? Coconut? This is better than coconut. This is the best smell in the world, coconut. <laughs> no, 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 you keep yeah. them. It's not like they're coming back for them, right? And you never know when you might need them. Yeah. Well, they don't break. Here, <laughs> look, here's the thing. You can see the danger, sure, but just don't let it get in too far. And don't give up on those s'mores, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. Kyle goes back to doing the dishes. Kyle? Yeah. Kyle has been using the baby clothes as a drying rag. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. It's okay, it could happen to anyone. Babs shows him how to fold them. Uh, uh, here's an idea. We got a while till the pizza comes, right? Why don't you go on and have your s'mores now? Uh, that's okay. No, we won't bug you any. You can pretend we're not here. Just pitch your tent under the skylight and, and you can camp out. Wait. She pulls a box of hot cocoa from the staging stuff. <laughs> With marshmallows. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah? Babs hands him a daisy. Kyle takes the hot cocoa and daisy and goes up to Glory, who is absorbed in the measuring of the wall with Mac. Hey, Glory. Yeah. Do you want to go camping with me? We're working. Just till the pizza comes. You, you really need some good experiences in this space for the staging. Don't worry. We can handle the rest out here. You won't even know we're here. And by the time the pizza comes, we'll be just about done. Babs takes over the unraveled sweater and starts cleaning it up. You good with this? Yeah, yeah, you go on. I've got this. I've got everything here. Mac takes over the boxes. Glory follows Kyle to the island where they try to pitch a tent. Scene three. In the kitchen, Glory and Kyle have pitched a little tent, though opaque to Mac and Babs, we see inside. Inside, they try unsuccessfully to roast the tiny cocoa packet marshmallows. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the dark, outside the tent, Mac and Babs do their staging work and pretend not to be there. Mac's, Mac builds walls out of boxes. Bab tries to make the unraveled sweater into decorations. So what do you think? They're good. <laughs> do you want a fireplace? Well, I don't know if there's time. In, in our house, one day, like way down the road. Oh, <laughs> sure. Ow! Oh, you okay? Here, oh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. You, you have to make sure you pull it out of the flame 
before the toothpick burns down. <laughs> You've done this before. Why, are you impressed by my skills? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used to sneak marshmallows out of the cereal at breakfast. And then I'd just get up in the middle of the night and grab the counselor's lighter and a toothpick and... <laughs> there must have been some good parts. Like ghost stories or songs in caves or whatever. One time they made us run five miles while wearing trash bags. Did you ever sneak out? Once, to find raspberries. Ooh, you never told me you were a rebel. <laughs> yeah, but I, I couldn't see in the dark, so I, I wasn't sure what I was eating. <laughs> so then I got sick, and they sent me home early, so I guess it worked out okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could go back and be there with you. This is good, right? I mean, this is fun. It's like this is what it was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit, what? 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 Your marshmallow. Oh, oh. Shit, we are not covered for fire. It's, it's okay, I got it. Oh, I, 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 I. <laughs> I got it. Okay, it's fine. I guess we could just have the chocolate and graham crackers. Are you really still hungry? No, I, I just like it here. Yeah, me too. I mean, we put all of this work in and, and picked out all of these things. Why not stay for a while? And do what? I don't know. We could get a baby or something. <laughs> Kill a baby? Oh, you're not gonna kill a baby. I know. I just don't want to have to convince you it's not your fault you left the water running. Well, at least I'd be willing to turn the water off. So wait, now you're mad I didn't drown the imaginary baby? No, I, just, I wouldn't kill a baby, okay? I just, I think I'd be a good mom. <laughs> you didn't even train the dog. No, he does the baby thing. I have never seen it do that. You, well, you're never here. Here, just, just smell this. Kyle shoves the baby clothes at her. What is that, coconut? No, it's the best smell in the world, coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get the, did you kidnap a baby? <laughs> no. I just wanna be something, okay? Can we just get through this? And then once we're liquid, Never mind. We... Kyle goes into a sleeping bag. What are you doing? I'm going to sleep. What about them? I have 20 minutes till the pizza gets here. You said you'd help me. We can talk about it, okay? Just not right this second, okay? Do you want me to turn on the heat? No, but I could get you a blanket if you're cold. I'm not cold. Fine. Can you just tuck the blankets around back around me then? You're messing them up. Can you just do it a little bit more like a burrito? <laughs> <laughs> then you won't be able to breathe. Well, don't do it too tight. I'm not your mom. I know. That's not what I am. I know. Okay. Oh. Okay, good. She does it more like a burrito. <laughs> you have enough room? Yeah. You? Yeah. I can't even see it from here anyway. What? The moon. Oh, sure you can. You just have to... Wait, hold on. Kyle gets up to zip open the moon flap in the roof of the tent. He messes up all the covers again. Scene four. Outside the tent, Mac and Babs have reworked the house's interior. Mac has rebuilt not only the original wall, but all of the original walls. Now there is a kitchen, a dining room, and a living room. He works with a renewed energy. Babs tries to make decorations out of the staging stuff, and 
to soften the edges of the walls with the red sweater's entrails, but it keeps getting away from her. There, you just try and knock that wall down now. Why do you have to put edges everywhere? I told her I was gonna fix it and that's what I'm doing. No, I don't want anyone banging their heads. Yeah, they won't, as long as they don't walk into the walls. You're not even fixing it. All you're doing is putting it back like it was. Well, it's, it's not finished. I still have to build out there she and- She doesn't want it like it was. She's a kid, she doesn't know what she wants. She wants it open concept. Look, you were right, okay? They stay with us for just a little while, just till they get their feet under. Then we can save and figure out what they really want to build. They want an open concept. I'm telling you, once they see it like it's supposed to be. I want an open concept. <laughs> You're the one that picked out this floor plan. You said you wanted a living room here and a dining room, remember? You walked right there and there and there and you drew it on the floor with chalk. I gave you a dining room. I even put in a door because you said you wanted a place you could close. Well, he cried all the time, and then he learned to talk, and he did that all the time. It was all the time. Oh, maybe if you listened. Well, you got ears, too. You weren't hardly here when he was little. You, you spend the first three years chasing him, trying to keep him alive. Who can listen all the time? You know, I used to know Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> you did his eyebrows. Well, let me tell you, you do a person's eyebrows, you know him. <laughs> he used to call me out to 54. Once. <laughs> Look, I never made you stop cutting hair. I built you a room. I, I put mirrors and outlets for the dryers. You said you just wanted to be a mom. Well, you said you were going to make Postmaster. I didn't know what it was going to be. I guess I did. This doesn't have to be what we add up to. Once the baby comes... Whoa, what baby? They're talking about a baby. What the hell did you say to her? But there's room. We have to clean out the crawl space and find the cereal box. That's ours. What's good's it doing? It's not a good time right now. It never is. Uh, they've got the open house to think about. He needs something. Uh, so, what, she's supposed to ruin her life? And we won't be like us. <laughs> well, that, that, that's not what I meant. All, all I mean is they won't be alone. They'll have help. We'll take it for walks down the park and look at the ducks and the petting zoo. I wonder if they still have bison. And, and in the summer, we'll drive to the lake and to Disney. We can stop and get fresh orange juice, the warm kind. If you hated being a mom so much. I won't be a mom, I'll be a Mima. I'll show it how to make cookies and applesauce. You can name three things in applesauce. And you, you have to stop eating mayo. You want to be around for graduations and walking it down aisles and exercise. That's another thing. Don't give me that. It'll be fun. We can do it together. We can go over the mall in the mornings and get sweatbands and then go to McDonald's for breakfast and make friends. <laughs> you walk around the mall all you want. She's not having a baby. You just said she doesn't know what she wants. You ask her. Lori comes out from the tent. Ask me what? She stares at the remade home. It's not done yet. Uh, I still have to. I thought you were just fixing the wall. Yeah, well, you can't just fix the wand. Uh, this wall's the spine of the house, but it only works if everything else comes off of it. Share the weight. So you, so you need this wall to balance out that wall. Yeah, but, but, but we know you wanted the open concept. You want a concept or do you want a home? No, you're the client. We can take it down if you want it the way you want it. Uh, there's no time to reinvent everything ground up. <laughs> you have to have the structure first. Get the bones solid again. Then you can make things however you want them. That's the advantage of Sears. You don't have to decide right now. Uh, the open house is tomorrow. Well, I'll make a nice cup of cocoa and we can just talk it over. Together. You don't want to ruin your dinner. Uh, Pete's going to be here any minute. Well, it's not here yet, is it? Babs whisks Glory into the kitchen. Mac tries to follow them, but Bab uses the new wall to shut him out. Well, you better hurry up if you want to get done by dinner. Mac hurries to finish building the walls. Scene five. Babs puts water on to boil and bustles around her kitchen. She looks for Coco and tries not to knock over the tent that still contains Kyle. My Nana made the best cocoa. She used to let me stir in the milk. Isn't it supposed to look clean? Glory tries to tidy the red sweater string. Well, well you don't want anyone banging their heads, do you? What, you? what you do is you want to keep the edges soft. Babs takes the cocoa packet out of the trash and empties them into the casserole. Right, but how are people going to see the granite? Well, you said yourself, people get houses to get better families. Well, how do you get that without keeping them safe? Trust me, you don't want all those edges around. Uh, how is this more? Fine. 
You're gonna have to do better than fine. You want to remake this face. He almost set the tent on fire. I don't know what else to do. Well, there is one more thing, but it's... What? It'd be easier if you had a family. I'm trying to get my dad here. Oh, no, 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 I mean... Well, okay, you want to get rid of the smell, right? What smells better than a baby? I don't want to be a mom. No, you don't have to be a mom to have kids. Okay, but I don't like kids. Well, that's just stupid. Not everybody <laughs> has to like kids. What, you like adults? There you go, stupid. Look at kids. <laughs> kids are like cats. You love them one at a time or you don't. You know what I mean? What'd I say? It's fine. No, no, all, all I mean is it's different when they're yours. I know, I just... I think I killed the dog. <laughs> what dog? Kyle said he wanted a dog, but I mean, he's not really good at things. So I thought if we just rent one for the staging, then we can see how it goes. And then if we don't kill the dog, then, then we can have a family. No, I, we could get a real dog. I just thought he'd forget to feed it or whatever. I mean, he's not good at food, but then today I had to go to Whole Foods and I was trying to get back so we could stage and I felt the car go over something. Oh, but you're not sure. No, it did it definitely went over something. Well, maybe it was just a rock. It wasn't a rock. Maybe it was just a cat or a squirrel. I got out and I looked, but it was dark and I couldn't see and I had to get home. So, so you just left it. I'm not a good person. Well, maybe it was just hurt and then it just crawled off. And now it's <laughs> I should have stayed till I found it. I should have gotten a, a shovel. I don't even know if we have a shovel. Mary starts looking in boxes and cabinets. Well, you you want to kill a dog or you want to make this house a home? Do you know how easy it is to kill a baby? You'll have help. <laughs> <laughs> about your family. What about your family? You could have a grandma come and stay or something, or you got all this room. My dad can't retire. Well, we could help out. I mean, we're just down the street. We could come up and watch it and take it down to see the bison. <laughs> that cocoa actually smells good. <laughs> Maybe we could just use that for the open house. <laughs> see, this can work. And you've already got the raw material. I mean, look at your hair. Thick. You can do a lot with thick hair. Not much you can do with skinny, scrawny hair like mine, but you, here, let me see. Yeah. See, I do a cut and a wave, not too much, just so it wasn't so puffy on the ends. I get back from the park, baby goes down for a nap, I could cut your hair here at the kitchen table. I used to cut hair out of the house. I really don't care about my hair. <laughs> oh, bullshit. Everybody cares about their hair. <laughs> I don't. So what do you care about? Kyle. My dad not working at the call center with my dad. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You flip this house, right? Yeah. You get liquid, right? Then what? We do it again. But we start with a better house next time. You know why they put lather, rinse, repeat on shampoo? It's so they can sell more shampoo. People think they gotta wash their hair all the time, but you wash your hair too much, it's not gonna hold a curl. Well, it's just till I get things set up. No such thing. Okay, it's like my son. He always wanted a dog, right? Every Christmas, he used to beg. We always said, no, too much hair, too much mess. But he's 31 now, so he don't need me, you know? He's done. He goes out, he gets this little dog for protection, he says. He's gonna train it, he says. And I can't see how this little dog is gonna protect no one from nothing, but I think, well, if it gets him out of the house. so. One morning, I come out for the paper, I look down at the park, and my son, he's got the dog up on his hip so he can drink out of the fountain. <laughs> for a second, I can see how he'd be with a baby on his hip, trying not to hope too much, you know? And then I hear this screaming, this bloody murder. There's this little old lady, and she's got this yippy little dog, you know the kind, and she's holding it up like it's the baby Christ, and she's screaming, that water is for people, that water is for people, right in my son's face. You can't have that thing in here. This man has a bowl. This man has a pit bowl, and he's slobbering all over our water. And I'm trying to think what to do when my son goes up close to the lady. You want it back, he says, and he holds up his 
dog and he squeezes it like a pack of ketchup uh -huh. and it makes water all over the lady <laughs> and her little dog too. <laughs> I pick up the phone, I dial 911. What kind of mother calls on her own son? But I tell you, I'm afraid what I'll do. I'm afraid of him. And I'm trying to think when the lady, she grabs my son's dog by the neck, hard, you know, and I hang up, I watch, I wait for his little dog to decide the game. I don't know, I don't know, maybe I should have hit the one, but I'll tell you what, I'd have bit her face too. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's kids. <laughs> It's in the boxes. Which boxes? Shh, you'll wake him up. Got Mac, it. Mac pulls a fire extinguisher out of the box and tries to put out the fire. It doesn't work. Look, it happens. It just happens. It's not working. Oh, that's just the staging one. What the hell do you have a fake fire extinguisher? And then whether it got hit by a car or arrested or whatever, that doesn't mean it was nobody's fault. People like to feel safe during a walkthrough. Let me tell you something. This is not the way you do well, things. Well, we have a real one, too. Where? In the boxes. It's all right, we got one. Uh, but it's all the way down the block. You'll never get back in time. The oven catches fire. It's fine, you just left the oven on again. It's all right, it's all right. I just have to find it. Mac, lose, Mac looks in the boxes and tries not to pull the walls down too much. The more he searches, the more fragile they become. Maybe if you paid a little attention to what you were doing. Well, maybe if he didn't feel so alone, then nobody would have attacked anybody or run away or anything, and nobody would have thrown anybody out. He said he was going to kill the president. At least he thinks big. <laughs> you know what? Maybe some people just should not have dogs. The fire grows. The fire alarm goes off. It sounds like a doorbell, a little bit broken. Oh my God, she's here. I told you. Who's here? No one, everything's fine. The house is on fire. Fire? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. What? Help me, 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 help me. Kyle runs around knocking more cardboard ah. box walls over. He's gonna knock the place down. Babs and Glory try to get Kyle out of the tent. Mac tries to keep the walls up, but his hand keeps coming off. Oh. <laughs> Nobody seems to notice. He keeps putting it back on. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Glory Babs. tries to pull the tent off of Kyle, while Kyle tries to squeeze out through the moon flap opening. Babs! Babs! Babs goes to the fire alarm and tries to turn it off. Oh, never mind that. Just get him out of here. The back of Kyle's tent has caught fire. Babs tries to pull it off him. Babs, Glory, and Kyle tug of war over the burning tent until Kyle unzips it and emerges, wielding the baby clothes. Everybody stay calm. I got this. <laughs> he goes to the burning stove and tries to beat the fire out with the baby clothes. They catch fire, too. He drops them. Oh, shit! Shit! Oh, sorry. Oh, no, for crying out loud! Ugh. Mac throws open the door to Mac and Babs's crawl space. He goes into it, makes a mess of the homemade living room as he's looking for something. He comes out with a fire extinguisher. He fights the fire and wins, but in the process, his hand comes off. Again. He puts it back on. Awkward silence. <laughs> Scene seven. Mac and Babs's crawl space living room lies exposed. The smell permeates the house. The cardboard box wall sags under the wet. Oh, that smell. You've been living in our walls. Wait, what? We can explain. We, you said you were our neighbors. We are, if you think about it. <laughs> I thought we were friends. All this time, you, you've been lying You've been living in face? our walls? I built this wall with these hands. His hands oh. fall off. <laughs> He pushes them back on. They just wanted an open concept. Everybody builds something, they know it or not. 
smells like dead feet. I don't smell anything. Wait, that's because you're used to it. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. There the smell. Don't you talk to her like that. Have you been using our shower? Oh my god, and our toothbrushes? All right, I don't use anybody's toothbrush, all right? <coughs> that's a cedar floor. <coughs> really? My son helped me finish that floor. So let me smell your breath then. Smell your own breath. You're not even homemakers, are you? That's not even a thing, is it? <laughs> it's a thing, all right? You're not even the manager. I'm calling your boss. Kyle, call the police. Great. What's the number? Glory dies. <laughs> now just hear us out. You owe us that. I mean, we were just fighting for your lives, for each other's lives, together. All I'm saying is, why can't it be like this all the time? <laughs> Not a fire, but just this could work. Us here together, we could make dinners and sing songs and make s'mores, and maybe someday we could even get another dog. But we have a dog. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Nobody should be alone. Everybody needs a place, a little room, and there's room here. Can I put you on hold? Thanks. We don't even know who you are. Well, I'm Babs, and this is Mac. And the rest is a lie? Well, I am a carrier. Front line. What's your route? At this point in time, it's I'm temporarily on furlough. But it's just temporary. How can you be a carrier? You don't even have hands. <laughs> well, that's just paper cuts. Show them, Mac. Mm -hmm. Mac tries to pick up and handle that last package that Kyle had received. His hand falls off. He drops it. That's a lot of paper cuts. Well, you start with just the one, and then the paper just keeps <laughs> binding your skin. <laughs> then they get infected. They thought I was looking for workman's comp. I wasn't. I just wanted a desk job. What are you talking about? You love walking. You can get tired of something you love. Well, why the hell didn't you say? I'll tell you what that smell is. It's all these packages. I mean, look at them. They're not even packed right, leaking all over. You can't just leave an unopened package in a damp place for months. Let me see that. No, he can only give it to the addressee. Well, who's the addressee? Let me see it. It's against regulation to open another person's mail. We can't just leave it there. All right, all right, all right, just here. Kyle opens the package. He dumps something small and bloody on the ground. Is that an ear? Ew. So, you have to know my mother. <laughs> she sent you an ear? Yeah, but it's not, but she just has this very sort of dark sense of humor. And so whose ear is it then? Well, it's, it's just an ear. I mean, she just wants me to call her. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know we're here. I mean, it, does, it doesn't smell that bad. Well, you think that just because you're used to it. Wait, wait, <laughs> How did she get our address? Why don't you just call her? We don't talk. At what point in time did you become aware that you were receiving undocumented body parts through the United States Postal Service without a permit? It's just an ear. <laughs> Look, son, a stack that size? Now, you either got a whole lot of ears or it's more than just ears. Look, don't worry, we'll get them out of here. Wait. We have to get the smell out. Well, but maybe if we just get more cinnamon. There is no <laughs> more cinnamon. <laughs> Will you give us Thanks. Thank you. Babs and Mac tried to go out into the living room. It's not theirs anymore. Nowhere is theirs. Kyle and Glory make their way into the crawl space. I can't just throw them out. Well, they can't stay here. I know, but I mean, she's my mom. You hate her. I know, you hate her. Only because you told me to hate her. I know. I hate this. I hate what she does to you. No. She makes you afraid of plates. I know. So it's... why are you trying to hold on to this shit? It's what I have. This house is all we have. And we're going to lose it. Is that what you want? No, I just, yeah. Okay, well, happy anniversary. Glory looks for a door to slam. She opens the wall, goes out, and slams it. The cardboard box walls sway dangerously. What happened? Watch. I don't know, I think, 
I think maybe I'm leaving. Well, you can't. She can't. Mac, tell her. What are you going to do? Just just let it fall? I can't hold it. We'll help. Uh, right, Beth? Well, what about him? What if we're not enough? I'll tell you where you're going to be. You don't grab a line is nothing. Now, come on. Mac hurries to gather the red sweater decorations that are connected to the walls. They sway and buckle. Well, Babs! I'm not leaving him alone in there. You said we could help them. Bab goes into the crawl space. As she closes the wall behind her, the cardboard walls buckle. Watch! Lori grabs a line, saving Mac from being crushed. The cardboard walls fall, vomiting the staging stuff, Kyle and Glory's camping stuff, body parts, the cardboard boxes, and Mac and Babs' stuff that they had saved in one sludge that covers the floor. And that's... All that's left is Mac and Glory holding up the real wall with the red sweater string. They stand back to back, holding on with all their strength. Kyle stares at the pile of packaged body parts. It's not really our anniversary. We don't have, we're not married. We just say that when somebody does something shitty. It's like, happy anniversary. Like we just ruined our anniversary. It, it's supposed to be like a, a joke. <laughs> Babs reaches into the rubble and pulls out a hand. Well, maybe if we can just find the rubber cement. <laughs> hey, hey, Mac, where's the... Babs realizes that Mac is in the living room. She pulls burnt marshmallows out of the charred pots and tries to make them sticky again. See that scar? She fell asleep with a cigarette. She'd notice the checkout kid looking when she handed her card, and she'd lean in and whisper, she was like that, you know? Funny sometimes. There! <laughs> See there, it still works! She waves the hand around and tries to cheer Kyle up. <laughs> at breakfast, she... She was funny at breakfast. She, I tried to wake her up to take me to school and she wouldn't even open her eyes. She'd just say, coffee. <laughs> she liked it light, so I'd pour the milk right to the brim. I could carry it upstairs without spilling. I, I was pretty good at that. She'd gasp like she'd been swimming underwater all night, looking around, you know? But then she'd blow across the top and take a sip, and her eyes would settle, and she'd say, No doubt about it. I gotta get another hat. <laughs> but you know, she could actually do the voice. And, and not just Bullwinkle. I mean, all the voices. Mel Blanc, Dawn Butler, Nancy Cartwright. She said the key was letting your real voice be the trampoline the characters could bounce off of. Just solid, solid enough to hold them. I'd lie next to her and, and we'd put on the TV and watch Rocky and Bullwinkle and Looney Tunes and, and we'd do the bits, you know, or not. And sometimes we'd just watch and not have to talk. Sometimes I'd tell her it was Saturday. I'd make cereal and pancakes and waffles and banana bread and Bowls of Lucky Charms, uh, just the marshmallows. I, I piled them. She had these, she had these little Chinese trays. She said we got at Disney World when I was little. But who knows? And the more we'd eat, the lighter her voice would get. Until inevitably the school would call and I'd have to go. But the early part of the day was better. More than better. It was good. You learn to weigh voices. Last time I called, it was thin but sticky. That's uppers and Percocet. I just wanted to tell her about the new house, but she kept threatening to get into crafting. And when I laughed, she said how nobody calls. And I said, well, that's because when we do, you just threaten to kill yourself. And then she threatened to kill herself. And, and I said, great, call me back when you do. And I hung up on her. Babs has found Marshmallow and stuck the wrist together with the hand. She puppets the hand and uses it to stroke Kyle's face. <laughs> we can't hold it! You can hold anything for a while. Your hands! I'm fine. Mac's hands are coming apart under the strain. <laughs> gonna be okay, sweets. What's your name? What? That's what you'd call me. Oh, uh, okay. What's your name? No, no, it's, it's more like a joke. Uh, hey! Hey, what's your name? Lighten up! <laughs> Is that supposed to be funny? <laughs> I was just trying to help. Why do you always have to make everything about you? I wasn't, I'm not, but <coughs> some things are about me. Oh, here we go. 
What? I can't be that person? You're too much person. You take up too much space. <coughs> you suck up all the air, so there's no room for anyone else in any room that you're in. Look, I'm not saying it's your fault. It's just... Well, maybe I was just trying to keep you from breaking. Or maybe he was right. Maybe you were broken from the beginning. Maybe you just came out wrong. Or maybe I gave you something that just caved in and sucked all the brightness out of you. I don't know. Stood there at the airport for five hours with two coffees, letting them get cold. I didn't even call nobody because I just stood there. As long as I stood there waiting, there was still a chance you'd show up. I'm sorry. No, you're not. How do you know? Well, you, if you were sorry, you'd have called or written or something. There wouldn't be just a silence. I didn't know what to say. Nothing but a damn card. Babs pulls out a Christmas card and throws it on the floor. I used to write more. Your sentences were so long. Maybe that was all I could do right then. Maybe I just wanted you to know I was okay. Outside, Mac's hand is coming apart as he loses his grip on the red sweater strings. The walls start to sway. Here, just give me your lines. I know I got it. A little help! Babs looks out to see them holding the strings. They need us out there. I can't just leave her. I don't think we can carry all that. Kyle! I know, I, I just... Look, look, we took our son to the Grand Canyon one time. He cried the whole way, and when we got there, he wouldn't even look. All he wanted was a balloon from this tourist trap. He just cried and cried, and he wouldn't stop crying. So finally, I tell him he can get one, just one. But when he gets up there, he can't pick. He says if he takes one, he's not taking all the others. And I can see he's going to cry again. So I says, all right, fine. I says, go ahead, just get them all. And his eyes got so big, and he smiled. But he couldn't hold them all. They kept lifting him off the ground, you know, all the helium. So I told him, you can't hold them all. You can just hold what you can hold. Kyle picks up the arm Babs made out of his mom. <coughs> Kyle takes Babs's hand, and together they come out and, and take some of the red string from Mac and Glory. Kyle gives his mom's hand to Mac to replace his paper cut hand. Everyone leans to hold the house together, together. We did it. Yeah. 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 You sure they said 20 minutes? They always say that. Why can't they just say the real time? Well, then no one would wait. They should say the real time. At least you'd know what you signed up for. Well, you never know. No one ever knows. <laughs> <laughs> the broken doorbell rings. <laughs> Hello? What's the pizza? It came. You're late. I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's fine. So, um, it's just, uh, $39.95? Oh. Uh, if you're late, it's free, right? Yeah, we, we don't really do that anymore. Look, I'm so sorry. I really am. I'm so sorry. If it was up to me, I... Is he crying? No. <laughs> if it was up to me, I'd give you all the pizzas in the world. I'd go to Naples and find a dude that's like, all he's been doing is just Tossing pizza since he was five. He'd have like a, a, a mustache. <laughs> and he's like fanatical about his ingredients. I mean, he grows his own cheese and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't get to Italy. <laughs> and I can't grow a mustache and I can't give you these pizzas. If I give you these pizzas, then I won't have a signature on the order slip, and then they'll think I didn't do my job, and that the pizzas never got to you, and I just ate them all myself or something, and I just, I, I, I just, I can't. I, I cannot get fired right now. My daughter died last year. She was just a baby, but still, see, my girlfriend had postpartum and she kept leaving the water running, so I said I'd bring her along in my deliveries, the baby. And I, I know you don't leave babies in cars, even if you're just running in for like a minute. And, and I didn't. I, I would never do that. But somebody has to do the errands right, and somebody has to get the money for the errands. So I timed everything out. I got the groceries at the end so the milk wouldn't spill. And I got the dry cleaning first before they closed at six. And in between, I, I went to the Humane Society and got my girlfriend a cat so maybe she'd get off the couch. <laughs> she, she always liked cats. She watches a lot of internet. 
And then she has these pajama pants. They have cats on them. She got them as a joke, but also she really liked them. But anyway, so the baby was in the back seat with all the stuff from the errands and the cat sitting on top of the dry cleaning and she's doing that kneading thing. But I think maybe she won't get through the plastic. Home's just a couple more blocks. But then she coughs and she keeps coughing, not just coughing, hairball coughing, you know, and like where their whole body goes. And she's on my khakis and I have an interview tomorrow at the startup. And, and so I stop the car and I hang up the dry cleaning and I open the window so she won't do the hairball on my khakis. And the window is... Blew the dry cleaning, you know, the plastic. When I saw it, I reached back and pulled it away, but it was. She was already blue. Oh. I kept the cat. I don't, I don't know if that. I named her Sarah for the baby. Her name was Sarah, too. I just wanted someone. Sorry, we're really not supposed to. There, there's a script we're supposed to follow on delivery. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't find your house. All the order slip said was 84 West. So I put it in my GPS and it gave me like every West Street in the city. And I didn't know which one. And I'm trying to tell it just to pick one. But then it starts talking French and I'm yelling at it. And I'm like, I'm like hitting it, you know? But, but also trying to look in the windows for people who look like they're waiting for something. <laughs> but all the windows are dark, so I wasn't looking. I, I mean, I was looking for the windows, but when I felt something go under the tires, it wasn't sidewalk or glass. It was soft. I got out. I, I don't know if I killed it or I, I mean, he was already in the street, so it may, maybe he was already sick. Or I, I don't know. But I just thought someone has to be missing it, you know? So I started going door to door, but nobody was anywhere. And it's like, does anybody live anywhere anymore? Anyway. <laughs> and then it was late. It is late. What does it look like? The dog. Oh, it's uh, sort of like uh, brown. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Oh. That's our dog. Oh my God, he killed our dog. No, 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 no. It was probably already. <laughs> if I can make this delivery, then maybe I can still talk them into a warning or a reprimand or something. You know, like a teachable moment or whatever. <laughs> I just, I, I can't get fired right now. Not yet. I ran over something soft on the way home. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could just answer the door. Maybe if we, like if, if we just let go, maybe there's a chance it'll fall out. Isn't there also a chance it'll fall on our heads? It's a chance. Maybe if we all let go at the exact same time. One. Two. Wait, 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 on three or after three? Mm -hmm. On. After. <laughs> Everybody counts together and then we'll all go on three. After three. Fine, after. Thank you. One, two, three. three. They let go. Some walls fall away and some fall in. Kyle's mom's pieces and the crawl space are crushed. The pizza guy is saved. Like Buster Keaton when the house falls in Steamboat Bill. <laughs> they stand in the open, looking at each other. Glory, Kyle, Babs, and Max scrounge in their pockets and the rubble for enough to pay the pizza guy. Kyle pays him and takes the pizza. They go and sit down with it. The pizza guy just stands there, lost. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, are, you, are you hungry? <laughs> the pizza guy joins them. They all gather together around the pizza box, picnic style. Sounds of a neighborhood appear in the distance. Through them, big, beautiful, romantic music might swell. It might be on the street where you live, or something like that. End of play. <laughs>
write the second or a character? Uh, it could be feel, you could say, this play makes me feel blah, whatever that is. Uh, uh, this play makes me wonder about, fill that in. Uh, this, uh, not smart, analytical, I'm not looking for any of that. I'm looking for like gut response. Like what's off, off the top of your head right now? Hilarious. Hilarious, thank you. What else? Yes, sir. It was great, I kept waiting for the walls to fall. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. He kept waiting for the walls to fall, and he said, "It's somebody back there." What was it? Oh, she's one sick puppy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Thank you for that. What else? Yes, it. This play makes me think about my mom. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and the bald soprano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the absurd. Yeah. Um, I wonder who came up with the Sears house. I mean, that I remember hearing about those, but never heard it as the basis of a play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great concept. Interesting idea, yeah. Thank you for that. What else? That was real a long time ago. The Sears house? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Where, what's the sequel? <laughs> we'll have to save that question for when we uh, bring the playwright into the, into the conversation. We're going to pretend Tori's not here right now. We're going to talk about it. Uh, anything else? Um, it's, I like the meaning of the open and new. I guess it's kind of struck me. Interesting. Thank what you. That? The, she liked the meaning of the old and the new. She said.
trying to figure out how over a course of six or seven months Ooh. the older couple got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I want to believe it could really happen, and I know we don't have a set built, so I can't see right. the physical space. Right. But my mind was veering off into wondering, how's this really working? Yeah. How, how, how is a new couple flipping a house, building a house, knocking out walls, not go in or go into the crawl space or into this area where they're hiding. I just wanted to believe that they really were able to get away with it. And this, you know, yeah. what I understand a crawl space to be in the Sears and Roebuck house. And I, I just was wanting to eventually maybe hear a, uh -huh. you know, an uh -huh. answer to how that could, question could be answered. Right, 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 right. She, she was so fixated on the kitchen. Fuck the crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants the kitchen to look nice. <laughs> But yeah, but there, but that's still a, that's an interesting through line, right? That that image of what, how's that crawl space going to be manifest, and, and and how does it change as the story goes on to the point that it gets sort of burst open, you know, eventually. So yeah, the tent was something, and camping in the kitchen yeah. was something that uh, it changed through the play. I mean, it, it and that I found hard to. Well, it, it did, and then it caught a fire, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, there is a... <laughs> yeah. Living in denial. Mm -hmm. You know, avoiding the fact that there were these people living in their wall. And yeah. The other people were in denial that they didn't have a house anymore, so they stayed there. Yeah. And these two were pretending they were married. They really weren't. Yeah. So that, yeah. Is there any, um, is, there, is there any visual image that connects to that for you that helps you that sense of denial at all? Well, what this gentleman was saying about how do they get away with not um, hearing yeah. each other. They just were, they heard it, but they were not there. Right, right. Did you have something from the uh, interweb? Yes, <laughs> Amanda Carr is watching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She says that uh, Daisy scores in hot chocolate in a seafood tent. Uh -huh. She also says that Garrus and Denise can live in her walls anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Denise 
to have this huge fantasy about hating this uh, hypothetical child and go see the bison. <laughs> uh, and, and Megan had this huge, huge plan of just like flipping the house like that and it would be fine. And he's kind of in denial about what the hell's going on with his mother and just dumping every package. <laughs> yeah. No, because I'm really interested in that idea that there's there's this sort of surreal, dreamlike imagery, right? This sort of heightened, beyond real, you know, hands falling off, all the, all that kind of stuff. But what does that? Uh, how does how, what stories that connect to you? I mean, how does seeing the yarn being stretched all over the place? Uh, you know, what does that what does that image relay to you about a story or about the story or about one of the characters or anything? Is, is there anybody want to talk about that? Like the connection of an image to some. Some, something about the play that makes sense for you? Yeah. Well, I think it's charming. I mean, the vagrants work their way in and these totally absurd things, and uh, suddenly they break out in song. And, you know, they get under their skin and they bond and they do all this crazy stuff. And it's, that part's really very charming. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. I like the house as kind of a, a living body with the veins or the muscles connecting and how it's people living on top of people. It makes me think of family history and how we recreate the ghosts of the people who came before us and how it's all, it felt like, <laughs> this is weird, but it felt like all the layers of things that I'm learning about my life and my family all at once. If I could put it, all the layers all at once up there, that's what it felt like, sans body parts. And <laughs> <laughs> that's not my thing, but it felt like, it felt like <laughs> that. Right, so you can all that interconnect like, together. together. Yeah. See what, how it made yeah, see through the skin. Yeah, see through the skin. That's interesting. <laughs> Every character in the play had a family member that was absent, that they were disappointed in or felt guilty and responsible for. And I'm wondering if, you know, that is the strain of these absent relationships with people who aren't there anymore, whether they're dead or mailing pieces of themselves or, yeah. you know, you can't retire because, you know, Right, it just right. seemed like there's this, uh, they were all under pressure because of people who weren't there, or a son who was a failure. And they've let them down. And so yeah. yeah. They failed in some way. Uh, can somebody tell me the story of the son of, Ma of Babs and Matt's son, that absent person? Like, what do, we, what do you know about him? What do you understand about the story of the son? I see a hand over here, yes? Well, what I understood about him is that he had promise as a kid, but he ended up sort of crazy and homeless, it sounded like. Yeah. And they had sort of had to wash their hands of it, but they felt bad about it. And it seemed like, following up on what you said about there's somebody missing, the, it's all about parent-child relationships, even though nobody who's in <coughs> this play is a parent or child of anybody else who's in the play. But the key is, is this always, like, feeling guilt or attachment of what the parents have to give to the child, what the parent child owes to the parent, and the two, Babs wants to create a surrogate family with these people who are not her children, and wants them to have a child, even though hers turned out to be this big, didn't turn out disappointment. And then this sending of the body parts remind me of like the giving tree, like the parent who gives everything and makes you feel guilty because they're like, I sacrifice everything for you. Look, I cut off my trunk for you and my limbs and here, I'm, you know, this stump and you owe me now. It's <laughs> <laughs> not like I ever knew any parents like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, actually really cool. Does anybody else have anything you want to throw in about either what you know about the son or, or, or uh, Kyle's mom? Is there any other? There's a lot of depression going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of depression. Like, like, his, Kyle's mom was depressed. She wasn't she on drugs that he yeah. tells her in he the does wall. Refer to that, yeah. And then the pizza guy's wife had postpartum depression. Yeah. And she, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, early on we heard that the mother didn't have that address, but all these packages keep coming from yeah. the mother. And then there's the elephant in the room, which is how could the mother still be alive if all these body parts are in their house? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great question. That's, that, 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 I think that's, you know, what you should be asking yourself. I love it. That's, that's what I think is so awesome about this play, right, is that, like, it is a living room play, but instead of, like, if Sam Shepard wrote it, there would be a monologue about if I could cut off my ear to get you to call me, I would. And in this play, she actually, like,
like hot pepper here and stuff too. <laughs> and then there's like you can't avoid the entrail like sort of um, semiotics of these red strings everywhere. Right. So it's like when it, it's literalizing and theatricalizing something that we all know very well. Um, and in this, right, it's apparent in, in it's apparent in child play without actual parent and children. So it's giving us. I think it's a really special piece in the sense it's giving us something that we really know really well. We yeah, all I'm know these room. people, yeah. right? But we're seeing it and hearing it in a very different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I thought that scene kind of like that is between uh, the mom or between Baz and Kyle in the crawl space was interesting when they both talked to, like he talked to his mom and she talked to his son, but neither one of them addressed the fact that, like, not one of them was like, what are you talking about? You're telling me you're crazy right now. Because both of them knew what, it was like they knew what role they were playing and they just needed to talk what they needed to talk out right. and they were okay to be that. I don't know if they would recognize that that would be enough for the other person, but like, it was interesting. So I'm like, wow, is he your son? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> relationship. I mean, just in terms of, you know, I've, some people have referred to that we've got these people who aren't biologically, positively, you know, mothers and children, and yet, uh, I mean, is, do we have an opinion about what's going on between the couples, whichever one you want to comment on, is between Babs and Mac or Glory and Kyle? Uh, yeah? Um, I was kind of struck by the sort of surrogacy. I mean, I think that happens in everybody's life. The people that you're near kind of take the place of people that aren't near you, even if they're blood or or people that yeah. before. So yeah. I think that that was something that struck me about each one of the relationships where the other person was a social Right, right, right. That, that surrogacy yeah. kind of quality shifted through. Yeah. Sorry. I felt like they were kind of mirror images as well. You know, like Babs and, um, and Mac. You know, Mac is like the smart one or whatever. Mm -hmm. Babs was kind of the aloof one. And then in the other one, you, you know, um, it was definitely mm -hmm. the opposite way. And I felt like at the beginning, like Mac was trying to Into, um, into not getting into like the life that Mac ended up into, mm -hmm. and that Babs was trying to fix it so that Kyle, like Kyle could move his life into the way that she wanted her life to be with the type of character that Mac is now. So they just were sort of opposites, you know. Right, right, right. Do we think this play has anything to say about the generational differences? Um, you know, the younger and older couple in any way? What do you think? I, I think it's interesting because in both relationships, it seems to me as the woman is holding the main part of it up. She's like, all right, I'll do this for you. I'll cook your dinner. I'll do this. You calm down. I'll take care of the baby. I'll improvise toys. You know, that seems to be very similar. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a very good character study and what I, I, I would call like creative survivalism because every one of them is this close to some disaster. <laughs> every, every one of them. Cool. That's a very cool thought. Uh, so how do you think this ends up with them in terms of the relationship? I mean, what, what, what do you, how do you feel this, it ends <laughs> in terms of from this moment forward? What's, what do you think is going on with these guys? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to talk about body parts again, aren't you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whether that means they end up together or it's like 
you like that or different from that? Do you want to say? Yeah, what I found so satisfying is I, I echo that, right? It feels like one of those like perverse collisions of so many things at once that like the next morning the peace man and, and they're all gonna like feel better for a second of like, who? I can't believe that happened, right? <laughs> and then there's gonna be like that moment of like self reevaluation or what whatever happens. So it's like the play feels very feverish. And then there's that like exhale of like let's think about this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think it's time we bring the play right up on the stage and have a <laughs> them is not this play. Um, <laughs> it was going to be a story about um, San Francisco and um, neighborhood change and gentrification and the impact of tech companies on neighborhoods. Um, and so I actually went to San Francisco like last September and I, I interviewed people in one neighborhood, lots of different kinds of people, um, and I very quickly realized that I was more interested in what was happening with them individually that was causing their emotional reaction to change in the space around them. Um, so for people who had been there for years, uh, some of that was grief that, about the things that they had built uh, evaporating or being destroyed. Um, and for the techies, the 30-somethings, uh, a lot of whom are kind of my peers, um, it, it was anxiety about how do we set up the world that we want to live in personally. Like what kind of, when do I know that I'm ready to have my life? Um, and I, I relate to that, you know, just because of where I am in my life. Um, and, and then as I started writing the draft, I, uh, for a few months, was staying with my in-laws, uh, temporarily. And, um, <laughs> I feel like maybe that led into the play a little bit. <laughs> but it's not, I mean, not in a character way, I mean in a concept way. Like, you're sharing this space kind of awkwardly with people who are at a, different point in their life and thinking about different but kind of the same things, you know? Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so, um, floor's open. You're free to ask any questions you like of this uh, wonderful playwright and, or, or any of the actors, and they may have questions for you. So, yes. I would absolutely love to know how you envision it actually being staged, like with hands falling off, someone catching on fire on stage, <laughs> the see-through walls, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. Like, what do you, in your brain, what is actually, how does that practically happen? Yeah, so I, I do have practical ideas about all of those things. Um, I also want to say one of the fun things about being a playwright is that you can write impossible things. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, then the designers, like, you have a conversation with them, really. Right. You know, and so it's, sometimes it's about how do I describe it in a way that they can see what I see, and then we can figure out a way, you know, we can figure out what they see, and mm -hmm. we can figure out a way to make it happen. Um, you know, so for example, the um, the tent I see as I'd like to see Gordy and Kyle put it together on stage, and like that be a problem a little bit because putting up a tent is really hard. Um, and then I imagine you use, you know you could do it out of like psych material or something like that, yeah. and, or scrim, right? And right. you could see into it; it could glow. Like that could be great. Um, the fire fire on stage is terrible, right? <laughs> uh, there's a yeah in my head. There's a version of of that scene in which it's just smoke. Like, they can't even see the fire. It's just like, everything is smoking. That could be cool. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about those conversations. Running over his dog. Yeah, there's definitely not a dog. Oh, well, unless he walks in with it. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I love the absurdity, um, but I have a question. Is, is there a level of absurdity that is over the top? that you've ever yeah. encountered, and if so, you know. Yeah. So um, in a previous draft, uh, Kyle's mm -hmm. mom was put together fully. <laughs> <laughs> and it was too much. And that's over the top. That is over the, that's the line, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, actually, you know. So I, you I leave it to our <laughs> imagination. Just how far do the body parts go? Or do you think they're all there and they just haven't been assembled? I think they're all there. I think she's dead. Um, <laughs> I think Kyle realizes that when he realizes that they're all there. Um, 
But honestly, in that scene where he's talking to Babs and Babs has the hand, I wanted that to be weird and gross and funny, but I also wanted the audience, I wanted us to be able to see through that to what's happening between them emotionally. And I think, you know, the more I worked through different versions of it, um, if, the, if the grossness takes over that scene too much, it will, you won't be able to see the rest of it. Um, so that's kind of how I find No. <laughs> <laughs> you had a comment to make? Yeah. Did your Sears house come from Broadway Empire? <laughs> I don't know. What is Broadway Empire? Then it didn't come from Broadway <laughs> <laughs> It's a series on HBO. Oh, Boardwalk, oh, Boardwalk Empire. Oh. oh. There's a scene in it. Yeah, I know the, I know the, the episode. The, the, the episode is over a series where the guy is building yeah. the house and it doesn't fit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I know that episode. The idea didn't come from that. I watched it after I got the idea. I, um, undergrad, I studied his American history and literature and I loved mid-century pop culture, um, domesticity. That was kind of my area. So I, I got really excited about, you know, the idea of, get, of pulling a house out of a box or like having it pull up in a truck and you can just that's where it came from. <laughs> yes, in the back. Uh, so where did the pizza guy come from? Okay. Because like, everything I was like, all right, and then Andy. <laughs> yeah. Andy. And, and Can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, I actually, and this is not because I'm the pizza guy, but I think he's actually one of the most important symbols in the play. Um, and so here's why. Everybody else, everybody else is for the whole time about them, right? And they are all about, no, this is what I want. I want to have this family. I want to have this family unit. No, I don't want to have a family unit. Family, it's all about me. We have to sell the house. No, I want this marriage to work, right? Then everything crumbles, and the first thing they do as a unit, now that everything's fallen down, <coughs> is make sure another person's okay. That is actually, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of, we found him, uh, I guess in February, so I had done a whole draft of it and I couldn't figure, I, the ending was never quite right and I, um, I needed to see what would happen with them if there were a stranger mm -hmm. who had a lot of need and it was just like carrying it, like what do I do with all of this? Um, yeah, and I started writing, uh, I figured the pizza guy, they've been waiting for him for 20 minutes for two hours, or like all night, whatever. Um, which is very accurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was brilliant that he ran over the dog. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Jack, did you have uh, Why marshmallows? I, I, you said oh. casserole, and I'm thinking mm -hmm. something that my grandmother put together that is meat and vegetables. Sweet potato casserole. Right. I, I get the imagery of the sweet potato, but I don't think of yeah. marshmallows as a meal. Why marshmallows? <laughs> Yeah, well, for me, um, so I'm from Pittsburgh, um, and my uh, my mom's a pastor, and we go to a lot of like covered dish dinners and stuff like that. And so, yeah, sweet potato casserole, aspic. Um, gosh, my nana used to make like uh, Jello salad, and that would be our salad. So I was I was really attracted to something that was fake, but feels to me like comfort food. Um, could feel to Kyle like comfort food and to Babs, and also not be su sustaining. Um, not actually nutritious. Yeah. Yet. Yeah, it feels sure, like it should be. Yeah. 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 What else? Yes, ma'am. How long were you off your medicine before? Are you suggesting she needs to be on bed? <laughs> Did you have a hand? Yes. Um, the sending of body parts sounds like something a Jewish mother would do to create guilt. <laughs> given the pizza man's speech because he delivered it so ad lib and it was so great. Thank you. Yeah, it was verbatim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And he's awesome. They're all awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was funny yeah. as hell. <laughs> no, and uh, but that's interesting because you know the idea that there is some uh, that that the actor's job is to perceive it on the page the way you would want it to be done. 
do you have, you know, we talked some with Don Martin's last night about sort of how he puts it on the page to help communicate rhythm, or do you find yourself thinking about that to help oh, the, act the actors know what you're hoping their delivery might be? Oh, yeah, I mean, it, that has a lot to do with, um, with characterization, but also the way a, a scene and the whole play build, kind of yeah. like a piece of music. I mean, people talk about that. Um, do you guys want to talk about dealing with the language, especially the dialect stuff, or um, uh -huh. different registers? Any, anything? <laughs> so that, monologue, that monologue is very precisely and well written. I mean, it yeah. is pretty easy to interpret it. I th hope in the way that you were wanting, but um, uh, but it's just it it does a it's kind of like a microcosm version of the whole play mm -hmm. to me too because um, it arcs in that way and then it's like this exhale at the end that he shares with everybody but it's like every, everybody else things they've been dealing with you know s children and mm -hmm. relationships yeah. and um, but it's so well paced like the, I feel like you did such a wonderful job pacing the play and. For, for me, just in that one little bit, it was so much fun to read yeah. her words, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, question? You said dialect. Now, the only dialect that I caught was when you said read up the room, but I'm from Pennsylvania, so maybe I just didn't perceive the dialect. <coughs> was it written in? Yeah, dialect may be the wrong word. I guess I, um, what I mean is speech patterns, right? Like, Kyle and Gloria speak very differently from mm -hmm. Mac and Babs. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and there are some regionalisms. That's, that's kind of what I meant. And I think, you know, here, like working with the script and being able to stick really close to the page at a table for a long time, it helps me hear where there are wrong notes really quickly. <laughs> um, especially with wonderful actors who can pull everything out of what's on the page. And if they're not able to pull it out, then like, it's my fault, right? <laughs> uh, yes, There's some really brilliant writing in the stage directions, yes. <laughs> but the audience won't hear that. Oh, so yeah. is that just for... Well, you know, you do so many readings before you get to production. Um, you kind of have to, I at least have to learn how to write for a stage reading also and like figure out how to tell the story, especially when there's so many visual elements that, you know, I don't want it to be distracting that you're trying to picture this. I want you to hear the story through the stage directions. And they help, I can't say us, they help me as an actor. Even if this were being presented as a full-blown production, you know, the first time I read through a script, you read all of that as well. and. Stage directions like these to me would inform me tremendously. Yeah, it's like so, this is the kind of play we're in. So yeah, so I appreciate how literary these are. They it fill in a lot of blanks. It just makes me sad that that after, oh, except for a stage reading, no one will get to hear that. And it is she's right. It's beautiful. Well, when it's published, everyone can read them. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Uh, in the process of the lab, was there an aha moment? There were a lot, yeah. Um, what about getting the uh, Babs and Mac into the wall? Because they weren't always, so. Oh my gosh, that's right. I know, how did, <laughs> how, I'm trying to figure out how, how we made sense of that before, because we lived next door in the first couple of oh, yeah. versions. Oh, and then yeah. when Denise came on to, to read, I saw an email went out to Denise for the reading, so we were working together, and I said, oh, you're reading Airspace. She goes, yeah, I haven't read the whole thing. So. So we live in the walls. <laughs> no, no, we live next door. <laughs> we live in the walls. <laughs> so, and so the other day I was like, how did that make any sense? Like one day, because there, there was so there was one point where I finally came in and said, it's not weird to me that we live in the walls. Right. Doesn't yeah. seem weird anymore. Yeah. yeah, that was early. That was in I'd say November after I got through maybe the first act, and we. Um, yeah, we tried it with them as next door neighbors and Kyle, uh, Mac and Babs, Babs's life was kind of falling apart and they'd come to their neighbors for help, but it's not really a story about friends, it's a story about a family, mm -hmm. um, a weird family that gets constructed of broken things, like a lot of ours too. Yeah, and a lot of, so a lot of these actors that have been with you from the beginning, yeah. or close to the beginning in terms of the lab process, so yeah. has that had an influence to you? I mean, can you oh, describe yeah. what that's like to oh. you get a, have sort of a long-term um, relationship <laughs> with the actors you're working with. How does that help? Yeah, well, I hear their voices in my head when I'm writing now. Um, that happened very quickly. Um, and gosh, and in the rehearsal room, um, they they can see small adjustments, and we can talk about them in shorthand. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way that you can't unless you're actually in a rehearsal process. Yeah. Um, I never get to work with actors at the beginning of a process like that. Uh, it's usually once you have a 
you know, okay draft, you do a round table, and then you'd go and do it again, and yeah. um, not all the way along. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys get to fall in love with the play over the long term. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I know that it's, almost, it's really late, I need to let you go, but if you have any burning last question, now's your last chance. Check your walls when you go home. Check your walls. <laughs> True last question. What's the name of our stage director? Was a man in here? It said man or something. Oh, it's me. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nate directed this no, reading. No, no, the, the stage, stage manager. manager says Matt Parker. Parker. Oh, the oh. stage manager is in the stage director. The stage manager is oh. Matt Parker, who okay. actually has. I'm Carrie Pajetta. That's Carrie. Yeah. Doesn't she have the best voice? Yeah. <laughs>